Hi, Dave Scott, Civic Center TV, and an incredibly warm and yes, a little windy day here in Sylvan Lake at the Sylvan Lake Community Center, where today we're joined by the mayor of this beautiful community, Jim Calper. Hey, Jim. Hi, Dave. How are you? Fantastic. Good to have you with us. The wind is blowing, but anytime it's in the low 70s in early March, that's a pretty good deal. Fantastic. So here in Sylvan Lake, like many of our communities in the area, we're surrounded by all of this beautiful water. And you know, we're going to talk a little bit about your community and the business affairs. But before we do that, what a beautiful surrounding we, we live and work in. Absolutely. Oakland County and the lakes is fantastic. And we're blessed with this beautiful peninsula property. And uh, what, a, what a charming place for all our residents. Well, it, it absolutely is. And, and this community center gets an awful lot of use by residents and also by uh, people that want to come visit Sylvan Lake. Correct. Residents uh, have first priority, and um, they can sponsor um, a friend or family to, to rent the, the center. And it's, we try and use it as much as we can, if not every day. Well, I, I mean, I love coming out here. We got the the tennis and pickleball courts. You might hear some tennis balls bouncing in the background. You've got boat sites and beach, and just a, a number of opportunities for people in the community to enjoy this resource. Absolutely. We just started a community garden last year. We've expanded it. The boat docks kayaks, pickleball, volleyball, bocce, uh, it's all right here. Well, you know, but bottom line, if you're a mayor of a city, it doesn't matter how great all of this is, if people's garbage isn't getting taken out, and if the other affairs of the city aren't being taken care of, then, you know, there's gonna people are going to be a little bit upset. But you guys have been running a good shop here in Sylvan Lake. Yeah, we're really fortunate. Uh, you know, John Martin, our city manager, 40 years, uh, Denise uh, Dryden, our clerk, and our, our new chief of police, uh, Corey O'Donoghue, they do a wonderful job. Makes our city council jobs easy because they've been here so long, they're experienced, and uh, the city runs pretty nice. So we have all this uh, beautiful land and amazing residential communities back here by the water. But you do have a major thoroughfare running through your community, and that's Orchard Lake Road. And in the last year, during this uh, 2023 construction season, major renovations to Orchard Lake Road. Yeah, it was uh, it was a very interesting that residents were a little concerned with restriping the road. It's repaved, thank you, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, just talking to Chief O'Donoghue today, the officers feel that the, the restriping and the flow of traffic has greatly improved. Uh, fender benders and little accidents are, are greatly down. The flow is better. Businesses are saying that the traffic's moving at a slower speed, which then allows a driver to notice their businesses. So, so far, so good. You know, that's really what you want. You want the traffic to be slow coming through your community. You want it to be safe. But that is good from a Chamber of Commerce perspective. I mean, that's great for your businesses. People slow down, maybe they notice, maybe they stop and uh, pick up a Dairy Queen or a hamburger or a T-shirt or whatever. Exactly, and, and with the flow being smoother, People don't say, I don't want to stop. Now they're saying it's easier to stop and ingress, egress on the Orchard Lake, east or west is, is much improved. Well, you really have a built-in advertising system because that road, while it is access for you and your people here and your local businesses, a lot of people do use that to get from home to work and to and fro, it's a major connecting road as well. Exactly, and, and you know, Kegel Harbor, Sylvan Lake, and, and Orchard Lake really work well together. Our businesses work well together. The three police departments work well together. Traffic flows nicely, and um, I think I think I'm guessing that over the next 12 to 24 months, businesses will see improvement in their business. Um, also on Orchard Lake Road is this uh, still vacant piece of land that uh, people to come to your city council meetings know as the Whitfield site. Correct. So talk about what's going on there. Um, it seems like it's a perfect place for development, but it's been several years and there hasn't been much activity there, at least to the naked eye. Right. And, and so what we've done many, several years ago, we rezoned re re the property so that the current owner can do more things with it. And currently he has approved a site plan to put an office park on the property. And that's approved and he can do that tomorrow. And we're also talking with the property owners about are there other things we could do with the property? Are there some other ways we could maybe slightly alter zoning to give them more opportunities? Could we have residential in there with a business mix? And that conversation is going on right now and it's, it's a great fluid conversation. So today he could build office park that's approved. Um, I think the, the developer is interested in other options and the Planning Commission is working diligently with them to get something uh, presentable that could come to the to the city for an open meeting. 
And now, do you work in concert with Rob Kalman and the folks over in Kego Harbor, who you obviously have a lot of mutual interests, uh, to work on development plans for that Orchard Lake Road corridor? We do, and Rob and I actually spoke on Monday, and we're, we're both always looking at what could we do differently. The flow of traffic was a big issue, so we, we think we've got that handled now. And then the uniqueness of both both properties, and you know, kind of the Cass Lake Road going north is kind of that district that, that Kego's trying to develop. And both Rob and I were talking about the uniqueness of our Orchard Lake properties because they're not deep. So parking is a bit of a problem to utilize those, those properties. Um, so that's the challenge. And we're trying to talk to the business owners about how can we help? How can we help? You know, it's funny you say that. I just think <laughs> I had dinner in Clawson last night. And, you know, there, talk about not deep. I mean, it's right. like sidewalk business. So you do have a little bit more parking here, but, but people expect to park right in front of these businesses. You've got to account for that. So these lots really, there isn't all that much space to deal with. There isn't. And, and, and that, that's, that becomes a challenge with, if you want to make it an office building, well, you need a lot of parking. If it's retail, you don't need quite so much. But that's always a challenge when the properties aren't deep. Talking to Rob recently, and as this airs, we're going to be airing interviews with Rob and the other leading elected officials from our community. But talking to Rob, it seems like they're trying to upscale Kego Harbor a little bit more. The quote-unquote trailer park property that people, they, I think they called it that, right. um, you know, is going to be built into a very high-end new development. I, I kind of call it the Bay Harbor of southeastern Michigan, right? You're taking an old industrial property and turning it something very new and fancy. And that along with some of the things they're doing along Cass Lake Road and, and you know, planning, um, it seems like Kego is, is trying to transition themselves into a little bit more of a higher end lakefront community. Do you see that over there? We, we do. Rob and I talked about the, the, the trailer park as it's referred and how that may be a, a, a changing dynamic on that curve and, and how will that change um, the, the people who live there, how they might visit businesses, how another business might be interested in opening. If, if, if Whitfield is developed with a little bit of a residential a feature to it and then the trailer park at the other end of the curve is, has a, a residential feature to it, what might that do to change or attract different businesses? Right. We don't know now, but it's a wonderful potential. Well, and, and these things tend to snowball, right? right? You get this and that and the other thing, and then that creates, you get these really high-end residential properties, and maybe that will affect some of the restaurants and other businesses in the area not to pick on Sylvan Lake because I how can you pick on Sylvan Lake look at these magnificent homes this beautiful lake here you know you've always had a really uh, traditionally for decades maybe forever here a very diverse socio-economic uh, makeup here in this community Right, and that as, as as with everyone that we we've seen over the last ten years, property values continue to go up. One of the great things about Sylvan Lake is the is the family after family after family that lives here. You know, my daughter's a fifth generation living in the city now, and oftentimes houses don't go up for sale because a family member buys it from a family <laughs> member, and and so those are the, the the things that have made us unique. And we're so small, a half square mile, but we have six hundred acres of, of lake here. Um, we're we're really a bedroom community first with this strip of Orchard Lake Road that is a business entity and you know with you know Ellen's Cafe and the investment that they made years ago and Sylvan Table and the investment they made and now we have you know Guma and, and Live Bait is another new investment as far as and then of course uh, Sylvan uh, Grill, um, the Orchard Grill. These are all great restaurants that have been here again in a half square mile right so so um, we're, we're a fairly dynamic little piece of Orchard Lake Road. Jim Kelper, the mayor of Sylvan Lake, is here with us. I'm Dave Scott, Civic Center TV. You uh, you secured some millage dollars to help you with some road improvements, and that spend wasn't just put in one year. You've got more projects than that. Uh, right, and what we've done with this, the, the millage is as we've each road needs to be replaced. We're replacing two, three, four a year. And this summer should be even a more robust summer with replacing the roads, and we've had a mild winter. That helps at the moment. So our road should be in wonderful new shape in you know the next 12 to 18 months well that's good news for all the residents and it'll be great when it comes to parade time right. in the community and it get that that gets me thinking jim about the amazing events you know i think of the parade i think of the ice cream social and then now all the incredible things that things that parks and rec is doing to entertain people that live in the community and attract people from outside as well 
Right. So we, we've, the city and city council have developed a, a program where we can do community events that are sponsored by the city. And any resident in the city is free to go into the, the city manager's office and suggest a, a, a community event, whatever it might be. And um, we've had, I think, eight to ten last year. We're planning on eight to ten or so this year. We have food trucks that come on certain days. They come here um, to the community center. The residents really seem to like that. And um, again, I mentioned the community garden and all of the other things. We've always had a Sylvan Shuffle. We've always had the ice cream social. Um, those things have gone on for years and years and years. And it's wonderful how we've seen the community really um, pre-COVID and then post-COVID really rally together and communicate about what they might want to do next. And um, we're trying to manage where they're located in the city so that they're not always here. Most of them are here, but we do move to our other two parks. And um, that allows certain residents that live here not to always have the activity in their backyard. And can we move it around other places in the, in the city? And, and that's been going pretty well, too. Well, Jim, it's it's almost like a club here in Silver Lake. Kind of hard to get one of the properties. Harder yet to get into the lottery to get a boat slip. But when you do, you don't want to let go of these things. And so it doesn't surprise me what we said earlier that, that homes in this community tend to stay with the families. And uh, they're probably a little bit diff difficult for um, these homes and these residences to transition, which is good, I guess, and that you really get to know everybody and all the people that you serve here in Silver Lake. Yeah, it is really fun when we have uh, community or civil city council meetings. Generally, we know every person who's there. And the interesting part you say about that, Dave, where it's tough to get a home, but we've, over the last five years, I can't tell you how many residents I have met that have moved here, right? So there, it's not that you can't get a house here, but <laughs> but it, you, you got to be probably, if you see it, buy it that day. Um, but we have a, a fair amount of new residents, and they, they get embedded quickly. They like the community, and they and they become involved, and that's what's great. We kind of do know each other by name, which is nice. Well, it is nice. And here at the community center, you have people that rent the community center that don't live here, and weddings and other social events. And then you've got these great events that happen here with live music for the community and a lot of fun. And, and I've been to many of them, and it's always good to see how many people turn out and and enjoy each other's company. Right, and, and they're, they're so unique because it could be the barbershop quartet, it could be a jazz band, it could be, you know, just soft, easy listening, and then the residents get to choose. This one is something I'm interested in, this one maybe I'm not. And um, we try and keep it to a smaller roar, 9.30, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're done, and so respect people have to get up in the morning. And um, it's just great, a great community environment. When you see two, 300 people on our lawn here, um, sometimes, you know, maybe 75, not always two or 300. All, all wonderful, all wonderful. Well, I hope our audience will excuse us for being outside in this wonderful weather with the wind blowing across our microphones. It is a bit breezy here today, but I can't, it just feels so nice to be in your community, to have this wonderful weather, that beautiful lake that in March has no ice on it. Yeah. It's, uh, it really is a great feeling. And I, I imagine you get some kind of a great feeling being mayor of this town. It's, it's, I've always said it's, it's, I live, I think I live in the greatest city in Oakland County. It's great to be a member of city council, and of course city council appoints the mayor, so my fellow council members have, have the trust in me to, uh, to appoint me mayor for the term I'm, I'm, I'm currently serving. Um, I absolutely enjoy it. There's so many things that are right and so few things that are not right in this city. It really makes city council's job pretty easy to do what we do. And I didn't warn Jim how it's gonna ask him this question and guess always they they shudder when I say that but it, is there any one thing you've got you 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 and the the other electeds here have got so much done over the past several years is there something else that's on your agenda that you really want to get done that you've really not been able to get around to or that you're just thinking about possibly for the future of this community a little bit down the road um, we've been pretty good at getting things done. So current things, we're in the process of enhancing Memorial Park where we where we host the Memorial Day Parade. So that's really interesting. The Garland Boulevard is getting some re-landscape. We're going to finish the seawall on Lakeview. That's the last piece of our seawall that needs to be done. The roads we talked about, this building is well maintained. Um, so we're going to, we're going to, we've had the vendor approved to do the tennis and pickleball courts, but they serve larger municipalities before us. So they've promised us this spring they will be here to, to get the courts resurfaced so we can get that done. So for the short answer, we're pretty on track. 
um, which is great. We're working on, we have some drainage on Ferndale Park, which is over here, mm -hmm. and we're working on that to get the water out so in the summertime it's drier and more useful for all the residents. That, that will be kind of something that residents are all of a sudden going to go, why is the property drier here? Because we're working on that drainage right now, and that will be a big, big uh, upside to all the people who have boats over there and everyone who uses that wonderful park in the summer. So, short story, we're, we're on track. We've got a lot done, but again, great city management leadership in the council. We work well together to get these things done. A community and elected officials without strife or politics or any of the complexity. It's, it's remarkable. It really is. Um, what makes you most happy about being mayor? Um, again, it's the people. You know, when, when I you know, decided to do this, it was what will the people ask for, what will the people, um, you know, require, what will the people need, and the great part is they come to meetings and they tell us, which is really helpful, and um, I enjoy all the neighbors, I enjoy all the residents, and uh, for the most part, the things we work on are kind of, yeah, that makes sense, we should do that, yeah, that, let's do that, it, we're, we're really, really blessed, great people, great leadership, a great community, and everybody knows each other's name. It helps when you talk to one another. Jim, good to know your name. Thank you very thank much you for your today. time today. Good to talk to you. And I just want to thank all the elected officials and all the people here in Sylvan Lake for embracing Sunshine Week, which we are in yep. right now, and open government and the, the, the ability for us to cover your meetings live. Um, we really appreciate it. And that. we thank Civic Center TV. You guys do a great job. And we look forward to the summer our kids getting more involved with using the great technology you have to learn about the media business. Send, send them all over. Right. <laughs> we want to. We want to. Okay. Jim Calford uh, from Sylvan Lake. And I'm Dave Scott here at the Community Center. Thank you so much for watching this interview right here on Civic Center TV.